The kids want to go outside and build a snowman, but the only type of gloves they have are cotton, and so they get wet. So this is our solution. Just wrap their hands in uh, garbage bags. Listen, we're doing what we can with what we have, all That's right? That's right. Uh, I'm hearing some cracking. Over there is where it's not very cracking. Over here it's. Look at that. Whoa! Daddy, get off! <laughs> Daddy, get off! I just broke a piece. All right. It'll freeze back. So when it's four degrees outside, it's really hard to leave the spot. But we've got some problems. Also, we have a water hose in our shower right now because... Um, it needed to be thawed out. So we set a heater down here just to push hot air into the shower. We just close the shower curtain and let it drain because it froze. Not to mention, I don't know if you can see this. We have ice on the inside of our windows. With the stone heat wash triumphantly quoted the It's better now. Oh, it's so bright. Oh, geez. The sky is bright and the ground is bright. This morning it was four degrees outside. Now it is a toasty 14 degrees outside. So everything's frozen. We don't have water right now. These are just the things that you deal with when you're living in a bus in single digit temperatures. Really the things you deal with in single digit temperatures in any sort of recreational vehicle because our neighbors, they've got a heated hose and they were still without water for a little while. We've considered buying one of these like heated hoses and our other neighbor actually has one too. One of these, it has a coil all the way down the hose that keeps it warm so it doesn't freeze. The owner of the park insulated all the water and put these trash cans on top. We do not have one of those heated hoses. And there's a reason for that. Realistically, we only have to deal with this stuff like two weeks a year. Because it's only like two weeks, we haven't invested in a $100 hose. And really, we'd have to spend about 200 bucks because we'd need two because of where our water connection is. It's really far away from the water connections that we usually encounter. But, they keep your water from freezing. If the water connection itself doesn't freeze. If that freezes, there's, there's nothing you can do. And yesterday that froze. So even my neighbor with the heated water hose didn't have water. If you're ever thinking about living full time in a schoolie or an RV or anything, definitely get a heated hose, even though we don't have one. Another thing to think about is this reflective insulation for the windows. That stuff really works. It does wonders. We've got one fully covering the windshield. Reflective insulation for every single window. And we've got enough to cut for the kitchen windows and the bathroom. I just haven't. And then on the inside, we've got a big propane heater that puts out a ton of heat. The problem with that, yes, it puts out a ton of heat, but it also puts out a ton of moisture. The more moisture that's in your bus, the more condensation you're gonna have. The more condensation you have, the more moisture is getting up in the actual like ceiling of the bus. If you're just blasting propane heat in your bus, more than likely you're getting some of your insulation a little wet. And that's never a good thing, but when it's five degrees outside and you're cold, uh, certain things just tend to matter more. Yeah. 
Just saying. We don't have running water to the bus. We probably won't until tomorrow afternoon. It's not gonna warm up beyond freezing temperatures until tomorrow. And then the day after that, it's supposed to drop back down again. So we may have water for like a day and that's it. Um, until it until it warms back up. It is gonna be warmer next week, so we won't have to deal with this for very long. Like I said, it's only like two weeks a year. And our kitchen sink won't drain. The drain system leaves the kitchen sink and goes up under the bus and ties into a main drain line that runs all the way down the bus into our gray water tank. That drain line is parallel with the bus. So if the front of the bus is not tilted a little bit more up than the back, then that drain line doesn't drain down. It drains forward and water gets stuck down here. And when it's five degrees outside, that water in the drain pipe freezes. And I'm assuming that's what's happened now because our sink won't drain. If it did freeze, it hasn't broken any pipes. Last year, this pipe broke and a section of that pipe broke. So I had to replace all of this and uh, nothing's broken. So I'm assuming if it froze, it's gonna expand and break the pipe, but maybe there wasn't a ton of water in there to begin with. Something is frozen and I don't think it's up under the sink as we keep it pretty warm in there. These are the things you have to deal with when you live in a schoolie in single digit temps. Sometimes you're not gonna have water and you can't get anything to drain. The only bad thing to putting all this reflective insulation on the windows is that the inside feels like a dungeon. We took the insulation off these windows, but when you put it on these, obviously you don't get sunlight coming through. So everything just feels darker. What are you doing? Bye. The kids want to go outside and build a snowman, but the only type of gloves they have are cotton, and so they get wet. So this is our <laughs> move over. So this is our solution. Just wrap their hands in uh, garbage bags <laughs> so the water doesn't get through. Listen. We're doing what we can with what we have, all That's right? That's right. Okay. We have... <laughs> Y'all have, y'all have garbage hands. All right, Jude, you're next. You're the garbage man. I'd like to put my sleeves over my gloves and then wrap the rubber band around my sleeves. So, um, no there's possibility of snow getting in there. Yeah. We're making sure that's a hole. That's a hole. Oh, no. It's fine. It's just a <laughs> tiny little hole. It's I think all the in here. In here. Oh no! I accidentally made it a little bigger. I mean, Daddy, are you going to put plastic or, um, bags over your hands? No, I'm not doing that. Because mm -hmm. you're not going to build a snowman. I I didn't say I wasn't going to build a snowman. Or are your hands just going to get really cold? I I guess they're just going to get real cold. How have you enjoyed the weather lately? thankful to be alive. <laughs> I haven't enjoyed the weather at all. Why? Because I feel like I have to muster up the will to live. <laughs> Is that too dark? <laughs> but I also want the kids to have fun and enjoy snow. They so do. I try not to be too negative with them especially. But. But let's move to the equator. <laughs> like, like at some point in time in our life, we will live in Florida. <laughs> when I get old. <laughs> like, you hate the cold. Like, we are gonna live in Florida one day. When we're like 60, we'll be moving to Florida. I mean, that doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> I know. Hey Jude, go out there where Jewel is, where the snow hasn't been touched. Pretty ghetto over here with the, uh, Walmart bags over the hands, but if it works, it works. What, babe? Where are we building the I'm guessing right over there where the snow hasn't been touched. Yeah. You gonna use a shovel?
bigger. I can't get enough of it. It's like every hour. Can we go outside and play in the snow? No, you can't. Not every hour. Recently, the owner of the campground that we're currently staying at, who lives right next door, asked me to redo a handful of windows on his house. He knows that my truck's broken down and that I'm in need of work. And even though I haven't done any woodworking in quite some time, I still decided to take on the job. He wanted to use some wood that he knew would last a really long time, so he went out and bought some cypress straight off the sawmill. Now the fact that this wood is rough cut timber straight off the sawmill is important because I don't have a wood shop anymore. And technically this wood needs to be milled before you can use it on a project like this. But I do have a table saw and a sander, so there's ways around it. Now this timber is over two inches thick. So the first thing I have to do is cut the boards to width, leaving a little bit extra. And then I can use the side that I just cut as a reference to cut the board straight down the center. And then I can trim the boards to their final width, which cuts off the rough cut left from the sawmill. So these are the windows that we're redoing. Now that I've got a good majority of stock made and milled up, I'm gonna pull all of this off. It's a little nerve wracking though, because these windows are so old. They have a frame surrounding the window, but then it's really just the outer frame that I'm replacing. I'm leaving that inner frame because that's the only thing holding the actual glass in. Because this stuff is so delicate now and damaged, just have to be careful not to break the glass and not to break the inside frame of the window. Because if we break that, that's just more wood that we have to replace. From up here, you can really get a good idea of just how rough these windows are. Because these little decorative diamonds and the like spade pieces up here are looking pretty rough, we're also going to rip these off. And they've got to come off anyway because I've got to pull these boards off. We're going to redo all the decorative pieces as well. That's actually better than I thought it would be. All right, now that we've got the frame pulled off, we can make some final measurements on this window just to make sure our pieces are gonna fit perfectly and uh, put them on. Cutting these decorative pieces was definitely the most challenging part of the job. In fact, the owner actually told me when these windows were installed 50 plus years ago, these decorative pieces are actually cut out with a chainsaw. Now we're obviously not gonna use a chainsaw. We're gonna use a bandsaw that I found sitting around in this shop. And once we put a round over on all of these pieces, just to make sure the edges aren't sharp, they're all done. Windows finally cut out. I've got all these decorative pieces ready to go. Put like a nice round over on all of these little diamond patterns. And then
and then we've got the base plate and the two sides. So everything's made. But yeah, let's head on over to the house and we'll install the frame. Guys, today my plan was to get two of those windows done. I got one done and one's almost done. If you ask me, they look pretty dope. This is how the windows look before and this is how they look like now. Not too bad, just replacing some wood with some brand new wood. Anyway guys, I'm B, I'm gonna peace out. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to our Patreon, subscribe there. That really helps us out. And uh, we might be selling the bus soon. Peace.